Hey guys and gals, welcome back to another Vinnie Built Structures video. This is going to be part five of the contest winners build for David Durbin. Uh, but if you guys like to know what this tool is, stay tuned and I'll show you what I use it for. Be right back. Alright guys, before we get started on uh, the actual progress and what I've done to reach the point that I'm at right now, these things right here, you guys see me cut four cell signs off and these are the ones with the hole in them, I do not throw these away. For the simple reason is that I do not have to use a whole piece of styrene to do something like this. This is one of the platforms, loading platforms for the build I'm doing for David. And it's nothing more than these scrap pieces. So anyhow, keep that in mind when you're working with, with these four sale signs. These pieces will come in handy at some point. Alright, I think now we'll get on to the build. Alright guys, we're going to show you uh, in this part of the video how I get my um, stripe along the top of the building um, when I'm doing a textured paint job for the exterior paint. Anyhow, what I do is I start off with the color I'm using and anyhow this color is the same color that I'm using for all the trim which is moss green. Uh, I put a piece of masking tape and I know this is not masking tape it's actually pinstriping but I ran out of masking tape and I didn't feel like running out to the store. So anyhow, once you've got your a line established and in my case to the top of the stripe is three feet and so what I'll do is I'll draw my line on all my walls and then match it up with the next wall and make sure that the stripe is perfectly straight once this is done I go ahead out to my garage and I will go ahead and give it the primer coat. Now you can see that the tape is still there uh, and hopefully when I pull it off the uh, green will not come off with it. Uh, I made the mistake, yes, like I said, I always do make some mistakes here and there. I should have waited to put these on because what happens, and I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this or not, but you see there's a gap right there. And I'm afraid that when I do the top coat, that the paint will get under there. So anyhow, what I'm going to do instead is on the next wall, is I'm going to go ahead and do these separately and just put my masking tape on three sides. Then when the project is painted, I'll put these onto the, um, the wall. Anyhow, uh, let's see what else we can get into on this build um, before I move on to the next project. Alright guys, now that I have my pyelasters all um, masked off, the next step for me to do is to prime uh, the entire thing on three sides and I'm leaving the back side blank so it adheres to the building, um, has a good adhesion to the building. Anyhow, um, like I said, these are ready for prime. This one is ready for primer. Um, the tape that's on here will stay on until the building is completed, uh, completely painted. Anyhow, let me get out there and do this, and while this dries, I'll show you what my next project's going, what I accomplished on my next project. Be right back. All right, guys, as we move along here, this is one of the loading platforms that I did, and um, as you can see, or maybe you can't see it, but there is some uh, scribe marks in there to designate the different uh, concrete um, slabs that they put down. Uh, also, I painted it with this uh, Cadet Gray. It's kind of like a pretty pretty nice uh, concrete color. And then for the stripe, I was going to paint it on, but I said, you know what, I have some of these N-scale street markings left, so that's what I used here. Anyhow, from the front of the building, which is here, this would be the left side of the structure, and this is the truck loading facility and I made this to fit right onto the uh, mounting strip that I put here. So it goes in there like that 
and like that. And stand it up. And it's probably not going to stand up by itself yet. But anyhow, you get the idea of how that's going to look. Now, you guys remember I was using that sheet uh, kind of siding stuff um, for the doors for this. Anyhow, this is the door. I painted this and lay that down. I painted them actually with this uh, Rust-Oleum metallic. It's a brilliant metallic finish. Um, and actually, it came out pretty good, I think. I also added the uh, trim on here on all four doors. I'll get you down here, see the doors. And now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put them on the building and show you what they look like. So, this is a basic overview of what this wall is going to look like. And of course I don't have all the pile assets on here yet. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, they will not go on here until the building is completely painted with the top coat. Uh, these are just luckily staying up there. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to go ahead and build two more of these. One for the train loading side and there's a rear truck loading uh, dock also. So anyhow, let me get going with that and we'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, what you're looking in front of you is the tool that I showed at the very beginning of the video. Um, it's called the Nibbler. And as you can see right here, it's got a lock on it to keep it closed. So what you need to do is you need to squeeze the handle. And this comes off just like that. Put it down on the side. Now, with the popped up, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. Let me see if I can get some more light on this, maybe. Yeah. See this piece right here? It goes up and down when you squeeze the handle. And what that does, there's a sh small little blade right in here. And you'll take it, like so, and you put a piece of plastic in there. And it'll cut fairly thick plastic. As you can see, this is fairly thick. And just do that. And just keep doing it. I keep this in camera while I'm doing this. But as you can see, it just cut a groove in this piece of plastic. Anyhow, that's what I'm going to be using um, in the next clip to cut out one of the doors and show you how it is to, to use this tool. Anyhow, um, let me get on with that and we'll be back in a couple minutes. All right, in order to start the project using this tool, uh, the instructions say to drill a hole big enough to fit the head of the tool into the plastic. So that's what I did. I don't know what size that is, uh, three eighths, quarter, uh, more than quarter inch. I, I don't know. I just picked out a drill bit and used it. Anyhow, we'll start. Let's see how I'm going to do this and hold this so you guys can see it. All right. So right there, right? I don't need to be as neat as possible right now, but we just go ahead and start nipping until we get up to our line. Alright, you guys get the idea of how it works. It's just really hard for me to do it because this piece is so big I can't get it in the right position for you guys to see it. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of this out and uh, I'll bring it back when that's done. Alright, so now I have a rough opening right here that I use this tool for. It is definitely not a fast tool to use by no means. Um, what I did was I went almost up to the line and I, I just trimmed the rest of this out with my knife. The one good thing about the tool is it does save the wear and tear on these guys. Uh, and as you guys have been following me, you know that I've had problems with my fingers in the past. Uh, anyhow, uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. And then I will give this its final uh, primer coat. And then I might even do a mock-up of how the building is going to look at this point. So, 
Uh, stay tuned, and we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, as you get back to this project, as you can see right here that I've got that hole cut out, and I trimmed it out with the uh, um, my blade. And by the way, for those of you that are keeping track, that's blade number five. Yep, five blades, a whole pack on this one build, and I'm not done yet. Uh, I have about 30 hours into this build right now, uh, but that's okay because I like doing this kind of stuff. Anyhow, let me see what else we can get into, and I will be back in a minute or so. All right, guys, in uh, part three, I think I showed you this uh, bill of parts that I used so far. Well, I did add some more stuff to this, uh, as you can see. Since I used a whole pack of blades, I'm charging a whole, you know, six bucks for, for the blades, and I added some other stuff on here. Anyhow, what I'd like to explain is this is for this particular build and of course I'm gonna have I'm gonna have stuff left over out of every one of these uh, deals but anyhow if this build was for a customer this is how I would price out the parts each one of these packs of uh, styrene strips cost three dollars and fifty nine cents and this particular one that I picked out has ten pieces in it so I divide the 10 into the 359 and I get almost 36 cents per strip in the bag. So the customer's price, if I use four pieces at 36 cents, he would get charged $1.44 for those parts. And that would stand the same on every one of these that I do. I would just take uh, uh, copy down how many pieces I use of each product and that's how I would charge the customer. Anyhow, I just thought I'd let you know about that. Uh, something for you guys to think about if you ever want a scratch build done. As promised, guys, this is a mock-up of the building, uh, of the progress I've made so far. What you're looking at right now is the front of the building and my faceless office. Uh, I did locate some stuff that I'm going to get, and tomorrow I will order it, and uh, we'll continue on with that part. Anyhow, um, I don't know if you guys are going to see this. Let me see if I can raise the camera up a bit. Back here, you see two uh, supporting walls. I'm putting those in there for two reasons. Number one, it'll keep, it'll keep the building square this way. And also, it'll be an extra support for the roof when I put it in. I'm also, if you guys are going to be able to see this, let me back up a bit. I will be adding all of these gussets at every corner to keep the building as square as possible. At this point, I measured it, and uh, so far it's looking pretty, pretty good. Uh, anyhow, let me twist this around a little bit. Oh, and by the way, you guys have been asking what I'm going to do with all that uh, uh, every, um, sheet plastic. Well, this is the first piece here, and the second piece I'll be using for the roof. Anyhow, turn this around, and this will be the truck loading side. As you can see, I put my uh, bumping post in there, if you want to call them that. Let me get it in a little bit better. And there'll be, uh, there'll be bullards out here also when I get done. And this also will be trimmed down. Uh, I don't know to exact what size, but yeah. And now, I'll turn around to the back side. Sorry if I'm in the way there. Right in the back side, you can see there's another loading dock right here. I still need to finish up this door right here. Um, anyhow, uh, so far, I think this is looking pretty good. And finally, we will turn it around to track side. As you can see, I got the uh, loading platform there also. And let me just put a couple of cars in front of there just to let you know what it's going to look like. Of course, there's no track and no cork road bed right now. But that's one. And that's two. And yeah, there's a little bit of gap between them, but uh, the way the measurements worked out, I just had to do it that way. Also, 
I am not sure what I'm going to do with these doors right here. I seem to be having a problem finding doors that will work. And also, the people door, I know that should be a steel door. Uh, there are regulations on how many doors there should be on, on the building's particular size. But, uh, I'm going to see if I can make something up with those doors. Anyhow, <coughs> excuse me. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed this video up to this point, uh, part five. Um, part six will be coming up pretty soon. Um, I think we're going to move on to the silos next. Anyhow, as always, your questions, comments, inputs, subs, shares, and likes are always welcome. For now, that's all, folks. BNSF 6951 out.